Hi guys, it's been a while since I've done a video like this, uh, pretty much just a straightforward uh, discussion with regards to a video on YouTube or current events. Uh, I'm going to do a discussion uh, about the Bill Nye uh, Ken Ham debate that was on uh, what, a week ago, uh, just over a week ago, um, and this is with regards to Ken Ham's definition of kinds. And we've never had definition of kinds properly mentioned before, um, and as I'll get to it in a bit, there is still no definite definition, uh, as I'll explain to you. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done a video like this. Uh, you may have noticed some changes. I'm in a different place now. Um, the moustache was because uh, I was dressed as Mario last night for a fancy dress thing. Uh, well, it wasn't so much fancy dress, I just wanted to be Mario. But yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I might do some more videos like this, uh, depending on whether you like it or not. Um, but yeah, today's video is about um, the Bill Nye. Ken Ham debate uh, with regards to kinds. So we've never had proper definition of kinds before. Ken Ham tries to offer us one in the debate. What's it go like? That's what I'm here to discuss. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mention uh, exact times in the video uh, which I've been watching, which I'll link below. At 38 20, uh, 38 minutes 20 seconds. Uh, he's talking about finches, and he mentions how, yes, there is speciation among the finches, uh, but they all come from one finch kind. So what is a finch? A finch is, uh, well, well, true finches are a family called uh, Fring Fringillidae, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's a uh, family. Now if we look here, I've drawn up little taxonomy list. So you've got life, you've got domain, you've got uh, uh, kingdom, you've got phylum, you've got class, order, family, genus, species. So according to that theory, if you can call it theory, the finch kind is a family called Fringillidae. Later on in the video, uh, 39 minutes 48 seconds around that sort of time, he actually gives us a tentative definition and he does say uh, kind is at the family level, which agrees with the thing he said about the finches, because finches, true finches, are a family. So he's consistent along those lines, um, but he's not consistent for long, obviously. So he says officially kind is at the family level. Um, he gives examples on the uh, slide of the um, presentation he had here. You've got the dog kind, or the dog family, uh, caniform. Uh, you've got the cat kind, field form, and the elephant kind, uh, I don't really remember that one. So there's something that Ken Ham does here that uh, I sort of picked up on after just going back over it a couple of times. He says dog kind, um, for cane form, or cane a day, as I should say. Um, which is the family which domestic dogs, wolves, coyotes, uh, jackals, uh, that they all belong to this particular family, and um, he he calls them all collectively dog. This whole lot collectively, uh, and I think there is a reason that he does this. Uh, the reason comes a little later on, where he mentions a paper, which I have brought up on uh, Google Scholar. Uh, the paper is uh, genome sequencing sequencing highlights uh, the dynamic early history of dogs. Now what he fails to mention when he's discussing this is that this paper talks specifically about the origin of domestic dogs. So the domestication of dogs from wolf species um, and a couple of things like dingoes and that which are sort of basal to domestic dogs and wolves and all that. So he, he, he mentions, uh, in fact I'll read the line that he brought up. We provide several lines of evidence supporting a single origin for dogs and disfavouring alternative models in which dog lineages arise separately from geologically distinct wolf populations. You go back a bit earlier where he says the dog kind. Now he's referencing the family which dogs belong to, which includes things like the raccoon dogs, foxes, uh, various other things. Whereas the paper he then references to support the claim that there were two uh, original members of the dog kind 
is talking specifically about just a couple of species within that family. So his evidence that there are two ancestors for an entire family is that there were two ancestors for two species within that family, which makes absolutely no sense. So what have we found out uh, from these two examples? You've got the finches, um, which he says he uses consistently as a, uh, an example of a kind uh, being at the family level. But then he moves on to the dogs and says, well, this is a family, the dog family, when he should, he should say canid family. Um, and he, he references a paper that's talked specifically at the origin of domestic dogs, which doesn't back up his point. No one in the audience is going to look that up and find that out within that space of time that he was doing uh, the debate, and I haven't seen that pointed out anywhere else. But what does it all mean? Well, if you think about it, how does he define humans? Because if we were to take his word that uh, a kind is a family, as in taxonomic family, where do humans fit into that? We fit into hominidae, which includes things like gorillas, uh, orangutans, uh, and I think chimpanzees. If we, can t if we use his definition consistently, and say that humans belong to this family hominidae, then we are the same kind as gorillas and chimps and so on and so forth. So what, so what you'll notice about Ken Ham's definition, the finch kind hovers around the family level, but assuming that he'd cons he considers humans a completely different kind, that's looking at a kind at the species level. The same with dogs, if we take his reference uh, that he uses into consideration, he's talking about species level uh, origins. Uh, so we'll be down here again. So what do we have here? We've got a uh, kind sort of full between those three, uh, what are actually quite massive uh, taxonomic levels. You'll find when you're doing taxonomy, the levels that change the most are in fact the genus and the species levels. You're asking yourself, why is the definition of kind so vague? Is there a reason why he's defined it so vaguely? There's also another point which I wanted to bring up, which is uh, at 1 hour 41 minutes and 20 seconds and uh, after that, he describes a kind again, but this time he says something along the, line, along the lines of they've studied that this dog breeds with this dog, breeds with this dog, breeds with this dog, breeds with so many dogs, and that's how they defined a kind. Most of you may know the definition for species is a group of individuals that are able to interbreed. So his definition of dogs there falls again into species. A bit of inconsistency there. So why all the vagueness about the uh, definition of kinds? Why does it fall between family and species? This huge taxonomic gap, basically. I think I know the reason. Um, basically, when they find a new species, or genus, if they establish a new uh, genus, genera, where does it fit into the creationist model? If you go back to uh, the example of the humans and the finches, they want the finches to be one kind, because that's easily relatable. You'll, you'll notice that dog, cat, finches, elephants, they're all pretty standard, people see those and they think those are the same. So even though the finches are at a family level, they will put them as a single kind because it's easy. But if you look at humans, they want to separate them as a separate kind as well. You'll notice that they have this little thing called the creation orchard where you've got uh, each kind and they all branch off, um, but they're not connected below. And so they want humans to be uh, separate, they want finches to be separate, they want dogs to be separate. But what about if things change? We take for example Tiktaalik. What is Tiktaalik? They would look at it and say, it looks like a fish, but it's got features of an amphibian. Where do we fit that into our kind model? Well, it's obviously not a kind of fish, because it doesn't look like a fish. It's not a kind of amphibian it doesn't look quite like an amphibian either. 
it's its own kind. It's in a completely separate thing from, from anything else. Because, for instance, if they took just simply family as um, the level of kind, if they just they just scrapped the word kind and they just used family, they would they had one of each family on the ark. Then Tiktaalik would have to be moved within another family, in the same way that a human would have to be moved to be within the same family as the uh, great apes. And that's troubling for creationists. So that's why they keep changing the definitions. That's why Ken Ham uses both family and species to define kind. So that he has this maximum flexibility to say, I want them, humans, to be their own kind. But I also want finches as a group to be a whole kind as well. Even though that makes no taxonomic sense whatsoever. So what do we have at the end of the day? Uh, we came in hoping that we'd find a definition of kinds. Um, but instead we get this incredibly vague, nonsensical definition of it's both a family and it's not a family. So we've learned essentially nothing. <laughs> then again, we're listening to creationists, so what's new? Thank you for watching, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I hope to do some more videos like this in the near future. And uh, while you're watching, I do have an album, Revelations, that's going for free download. I'll give you the link down there. So uh, if you want to listen to some music um, by me, then just go look that up. And uh, I would love to see some people downloading that and spreading it and doing whatever you want with it. Do whatever you want with it because it's free. And uh, I just want it out there. So uh, cheers, guys. And I hope to see you again soon.